Thank you all so much for being here this evening. Um, I want to start by introducing myself. Natasui Samira Madison, Mutomas uh, A My name is Amira Madison. I am from Aquana, which is located on a tiny little island off the coast of Massachusetts on Martha's Vineyard. Um, I am so happy to be here with you all this evening. I'm the Supporting Indigenous Communities Program Manager for the City of Boston. However, I am also a councilwoman for the Wampanoag Tribe of Gayhead Aquina and an enrolled citizen of the Wampanoag Tribe. In my community, I wear many hats and have many roles, but that is the nature of being a Wampanoag Matamosas, a Wampanoag woman. I currently work in the mayor's office of New Urban Mechanics, your local civic research and design team, and the equity and inclusion cabinet. A huge thank you to Mariangeli Solis Severa, our chief of the equity and inclusion cabinet, who is not able to be here this evening. Our Monum directors, Nayeli Rodriguez and Michael Evans, and the whole team of Monum. <laughs> these are the folks who make these events happen every day. And on top of that, the staff for the city of Boston, our property and management, our operations, that team of people are absolutely incredible and we couldn't be doing this today without them as well. And shout out to the Boston Fire Department for being here um, and for the rest of the staff that's also joining us today. I'd like to thank also our, our mayor, Michelle Wu, and her incredible team who have also made today happen. Lastly, I'd like to thank NACOB, the North American Indian Center of Boston, for continuing to be a space that holds our Native community up. Without Raquel and Jean-Luc <clears throat> and their incredible team, I would not be able to do the work I do, nor would I have the space <clears throat> to go where I need to go when I need lifting up. This work in the last year has been incredibly rewarding for me. I'd also like to take the moment to give my gratitude to this land and the ancestors who I wouldn't be here without. This city is my home. It's where I was born and raised for a portion of my life. I remember the tea rides to my grandmother's home. I remember sitting with women in a living room learning to quilt, not realizing that they were Wampanoag and living in Boston. Boston has nurtured me and my relations, and for that, I must return the favor. Today we are here to be in relation with one another around fire. Fire is simply so much more than a space to socialize around. Fire is and has always been a space that offers healing and meditation. It has been a space for me to be in relation with my creator and my ancestors. It has been a space for me to learn about traditions and to learn about other indigenous communities. This moment is an act of creating space to connect, which is something that we are very much in need of right now. The state of our world needs healing and love more than ever. So thank you to our partners, to all of you, and to our Mashpee Wampanoag Tribal Elder Robert Peters for being here as our fire keeper this evening. May we continue to build for all our relations who continue to live and safely exist here in the city of Boston and next, I'd like to welcome Jean-Luc Perit, the president of the North American Indian Center of Boston. Jean-Luc Perit, Tayoranaka Tahalik, Etisa, hello, my name is Jean-Luc Perit, um, and I am a member of the Tunica Biloxi tribe of Louisiana. I've been living and working here in the Boston area since 2013. And since 2017, I've served as the president of the board of directors for the North American Indian Center of Boston. We are Massachusetts' oldest urban Indian center, providing cultural and social services for the New England Native American community for over 50 years. And when we say urban Indians, we hearken back to a time in the 1950s 
in which this United States Congress moved to terminate its trust relationship with the indigenous nations within the borders. And the adoption of policies of urban relocation and for forced assimilation for many of our peoples. In spite of that, our community members joined together in 1969. And on October 20th, 1970, our community members formed the Boston Indian Council. And in 1991, we reorganized as the North American Indian Center of Boston, calling into mind not just American Indians here within the Boston area, but also the First Nations, the many peoples that come here uh, under Jay's Treaty to live and to work. And for the past few years, as part of our board, as part of our leadership at North American Indian Center of Boston, we have sought to extend our services to all of the indigenous peoples here within the greater Boston area. Indigenous peoples from Central and South America, indigenous peoples who come here from immigrant communities, from asylum seekers, from people that are looking for some sort of stability here in a place so very connected to water. I also want to say that in lighting this fire, it's not an enviable task. It is something that we have to hold reverence for because, you know, just notes of fire safety, you have to be careful when you are that close to the fire. You have to understand all of the things that go with holding that space, holding that fire. And for many of us whose hearts are heavy in this time, this time of extreme loss for our indigenous communities, we are called to go to the fire to give back in our way. In this city of Boston, we all benefit from colonization in this built environment. But all of these stones, all of this earth, all of this had to come from somewhere. And so by lighting this fire, we are hoping to offer back so much of what we have been given. And we hope to offer back the heaviness in our hearts. And we hope for unity within our community as indigenous peoples living in this land. Tikach, thank you. Um, I would like to welcome Robert Peters, who's going to be our firekeeper. And then I believe our mayor should be here shortly, and we'll have her speaking right after that. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Robert Peters, Mashpee Wampanoag. I've lived in Boston for the past 40 years. And <clears throat> It's a good thing for us to all come together and introduce ourselves uh, to you and to other indigenous people that live in the city and to let you know that this is something that we are going to do more of. We're going to have more opportunities to light the fire in different places in Boston and bring Boston's indigenous residents together and create a partnership with the city and Boston's indigenous residents and with the school department and with the parks departments where we can have indigenous activity all the time, where there will always be some way where we can invite you in to our culture and share with us our traditions um, and share your traditions and allow you to bring them into our circle. And <clears throat> I just want to thank you for all being here 
and enjoy the fire that we're about to light. Oh, one thing, uh, we're going to have um, smudging, uh, and smudging is when you burn sage, and you smudge uh, to cleanse yourself, and the smoke from the smudge stick, uh, it'll be going around, you'll see, and you don't, you don't have to partake, but if you want to, just go up to him, and he'll smudge you, and walk you through um, the task of getting smudged and it's a blessing and to purify you and, it, and the smoke carries your prayers uh, to the creator so he'll be going around uh, doing that while we're lighting the fire thank you And I just wanted to add to that that um, the for smudging, we ask that when someone is smudging or that stick is around, it's a small one, you'll see a gentleman walking around with that smudge stick. Um, please, no photos of that. Um, however, everything else, that is open for pictures or um, film. But when smudging is occurring, we ask that that not be filmed or recorded. Thank you very much. Um, we also, we're so very happy to have our mayor, Michelle Wu, here. And we'd like to invite her up to speak. Thank you. Thank you so much to Amira and to everyone who is here. Um, I'm so grateful to our partners and leaders in the community, um, to everyone who is involved with the North American Indian Center of Boston and the work that you do year round to ensure that our um, community members are informed, involved, and um, that we as a city can continue to do the, the necessary work to enrich and improve the lives of indigenous peoples across Massachusetts. I'm really grateful for everything that Amira has been doing uh, on our team within City Hall as our Supporting Indigenous Communities Program Manager, uh, and also as a proud citizen of the Wampanoag Tribe of Gay Head Aquina. For the immense amount of care and effort that you put into getting us to this event and to this moment, and for all that you do to create space for our communities, we are so lucky to have you on the team in City Hall. Thank you. I also want to lift up Erwin Lee who was one of our New Urban Mechanics Fellows this summer and whose work with Amira made today's ceremony possible as well. And thank you to Mattapan resident, oh, thank you, Erwin. And thank you to Mattapan resident and Mashpee Wampanoag poet, author, and artist, Robert Peters, who will serve as tonight's firekeeper. I wanna start by acknowledging that what we know today as Boston is land that native communities have called home for thousands of years. And we are gathered here today in community with representatives from more than a dozen tribes from across the continent. Thank you in particular to Chairwoman Cheryl Andrews Maltes of the Wampanoag tribe of Gayhead Aquina for being here. And while there is power in the words we speak and in the truths we name, we're here not only to acknowledge this land today and the indigenous peoples whose relationship with it spans generations, but to celebrate, honor, and strengthen that relationship. I have learned and um, been fortunate to be in conversation with community members. And I know that fire has been and continues to be an integral part of our native community's culture and practices, a tool for shaping the land to yield fruit and crops, to herd animals, to prevent larger, more devastating burns. Since the first people made their homes in the fields and the forests, fire has been a source of heat and healing, light and life itself. Fire made it possible to cultivate and share the gifts the land offered and made it possible for communities to grow strong and grow old. And so as has been said, it's also a source of connection for all of us to the ancestors who gave us life and to the fire that gave them theirs. And especially today with the temperatures uh, making me want to upgrade to my winter coat, um, it is a reminder of how important it is in this part of the world and, and the country as well. As we celebrate the first day of Native American Heritage Month, I am deeply honored to be here with this community to be a part of tonight's ceremony. It is with great pride 
and with many thanks to NACOB, as well as the Boston Fire Department, our teams in City Hall at New, New Urban Mechanics and the Equity and Inclusion Cabinet, that for the first time in history, the City of Boston is collaborating with Native leaders to light a ceremonial fire here on the People's Plaza. And we will continue to work closely with our Indigenous communities to create pathways for Native residents to come together, connect with each other, and connect with their roots, and connect with the land. Thank you so much for inviting me to be here today and wishing everyone a Native American Heritage Month filled with wisdom, compassion, and reverence for the world we all share. Thank you. Thank you so much for your words. Um, I am just so thankful to be here. Um, you can check out our website, and we'll have events up on Native American um, Heritage Month here. And there are a few events going on, whether that's with the Leventhal Map Room on the uh, 17th. We also have a cooking demo that's going to be going on with the Roxbury BPL. And uh, we will have an artist that will be demonstrating um, and uh, have their work on exhibit here at City Hall, right in our mezzanine, which you are welcome to go into. It's open. It will be there nine to five as we are. And um, I also just want to say that, you know, this started as a summer project with Erwin Lee and um, here we are today and we're just so very thankful to be able to share this space with you all. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to the firekeeper and our mayor and we will get started in lighting our fire. Thank you.